Thing. Wake, wake up morning. Wake up guys. It's TCP in the morning. Wake, wake up. up. Wake 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 up. It's TCP in the morning. 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 TCP in the morning. It's 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 TCP in the morning. Good morning. Wake up, y'all. It's TCP in the morning with the morning tea. Sing the song here in the back. TCP in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bill. What's poppin'? I'm about to get this workout in. I just had a smoothie with my sea moss in it. Feel really good. Feel full of energy. Yeah, I feel like I'm I'm 18 again, bro. Like it was 90. Yeah, Bill. What's poppin'? I'm about to get this workout in. I just had a smoothie with my sea moss in it. Feel really good. Feel full of energy. Yeah, I feel like I'm I'm 18 again, bro. Like it was 96 at, at McCaskey. You feel like it's 96 for real? For real, for real, bro. You like, want that 96 track smoke though? What? Yo, let's get it. Let's get it. You ain't saying nothing. I think I can still run like a 4-3. Cause you know I'm on the sea moss too. So if that's what you want, I mean. Ain't nothing but space and opportunity out here. You want to put a jar on it? Let's put a jar. A jar Let. of sea moss. We got Let. it. Let's get it. You ready, Bill? Let's get it. Come on. On your mark. Get set. Go. Ay, bendito. You ever meet someone and it feels like you've known them forever? A place where everybody knows your name. A place where everything goes. This ain't your mama's podcast. The squad that birthed the caution professional. Put the kids to bed, y'all. This is Say Less Podcast. Searching for my purpose, life ain't always picture perfect, but it's worth it. Yeah, it's worth it. Even when you're feeling worthless, it's still worth it. Yeah, yeah. I'm 
drifting, I'm drifting. Don't know where I'm headed, I'm just drifting. I'm sipping and sipping. Lighting up the tree like it's Christmas. Just trying to find a love, it will miss it. I think I was trying to talk to me, all I had to do was listen Take a second to hear the snakes listen I'm paranoid Feel like everybody got it out for me I'm tired of people doubting me, but it's like fuel Yeah, that's the shit shit just driving me I'ma get to the bag and die me Keep them phone and around me Cause they just trying to dilute All these goals are put in front of me I'm fully focused So I don't need your company I swear these niggas bogus I'm ready for when they come for me I move to the city so comfortably You won't smoke with me You already know what it's gonna be I'ma bring the heat yeah, I'ma bring the heat And I ain't gonna stop until I see bleed I wanna see bleed You don't work and that's the only thing for certain I'm still searching for my purpose Life ain't always picture perfect But it's worth it Yeah, it's worth it Even when you're feeling worthless It's still worth it, yeah, yeah yeah, I'm working, that's the only thing for certain I'm still searching for my purpose Life ain't always picture perfect, but it's worth it Yeah, it's worth it Even when you're feeling worthless, it's still worth it Yeah, yeah I'm blitzing, I'm on a mission 44 with the long nose, sky pipping I'm different, different I be safe sifting Pictures trip, I got this shit from across the border About to kill it, somebody come with the slaughter They gon' have to start comparing me to Jordan All I ever wanna do is keep rolling Hate niggas wanna see me with my dick in the dirt I ain't worried about them bitches, run them bitches at first Killing the competition, throw that bitch in the hearse They can't wrap around my shoulder like that bitch was a purse Lately I been feeling like somebody asked me what a curse But the money don't make it I gotta get up and work Anything you see me with I got from putting in the work Grinding from the new year to December 31st You yeah, I'm working, that's the only thing for certain I'm still searching for my purpose Life ain't always picture perfect But it's worth it, yeah, it's worth it Even when you're feeling worth it, it's still worth it, yeah, yeah Yeah, I'm working, that's the only thing for certain I'm still searching for my purpose Life ain't always picture perfect But it's worth it, yeah, it's worth it even when you're feeling worthless, it's still worth it, yeah, yeah. Good morning, wake up, guys. It's TCP in the morning. Wake, wake up. up! Wake up. 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 It's TCP in the morning. 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 TCP in the morning. It's 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 TCP in the morning. Good morning. Wake up, y'all. It's TCP in the morning with the morning tea. Sing a song, man. TCP in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh! hey, 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 Brush your teeth, brush your ass. The morning team is here, y'all. Hey, get that crust out your eye. Uh, it's another great morning. Get it it's out. It's Wednesday. It's hump day, and hey. you're here with the TCP in the morning, bro, brother. Hey, hey you know what else, brother? <laughs> we gonna really show you how Ooh, we get yes. down. Oh yeah! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we got the Sarge with us. What up? And you know we got what it is. across the room, Lady L. Good morning, good morning, good morning. We got some dope news stories for you today. We got awesome conversation uh, topics. You want to stay tuned for Corona Chronicles. Good morning. It's TCP in the morning. Hey. Yep. Yep. Ooh. And Ooh. ladies and gentlemen, Ooh. I am Marquis Lupton, a.k.a. The Quiet Storm. Welcome to another episode 
welcome to another gathering uh, of uh, TCP in the morning. Ladies and gentlemen, we have some great news stories for you today. Uh, we're, we're talking about the Humane League giving out free food. We're talking about Wendy's giving out free food. Uh, uh, Trump suspends uh, immigration, so we'll talk about what that looks like. Um, of course, we have our COVID-19 conversations, and of course, uh, what seems to be the people's choice, um, our conversation pieces. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, in our uh, TCP news break, uh, we have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful interview uh, with um, Isaac Etter, who talks about um, growing up being transracial um, and, and what transracial actually is. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, eh, eh, buckle up. Because it's going to be a great, great, great show. So it's TCP in the morning. In the news morning. with a shimmy. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> so no one thinks that's a good idea. Stop the news with the shimmy. <laughs> I like it. The shimmy. I just know what you think. Yo, right, right. The shimmy. Look, look. If Anderson Cooper just shimmied a little bit more, I may watch. <laughs> I mean, I, I, right, right, oh, right, 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 right. When he, he tells a news, he, he he tells a good news story or something like that. He makes a good point, like mm -hmm. Senator. What you think about that? <laughs> let's get to it. <laughs> but let's go to a commercial. Hey, <laughs> hey, good morning, Lisa. Good yes. morning, Tanya. Johnny, what up? Yeah. Johnny Preston, what up? Good morning. Mar Marlon, what up? What up? Uh, Johnny, like he said, good morning. Lisa, good morning. Nina, good morning. Uh, Tanya, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome, good morning. welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome. And for those that have uh, uh, came back, welcome, welcome, welcome <clears throat> back. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, um, without further ado, uh, we're going to get into our our first news story. Uh, but b before we do that, um, Sarge, really? how you doing today? Yeah, I'm great. Listen. This weekend, it was a good weekend, you know, mm -hmm. um, great first day, hung out with the kids last night, you know, got right. to lay around with the kids, man, right. kids laid on me, watched <laughs> movies, mm -hmm. you know, some people didn't like my choice in movies, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, Green Hornet, then watched the episode what? of Merlin. You know what's crazy is that he fussed for me buying Green Hornet, and I, I like thought it was pretty good. I like stupid humor. That is that no no I like no stupid no. humor. Drop drop that second part. I'm one of the people that like Napoleon Dynamite. Like <laughs> yeah, that was hilarious. No, I eat your dang quesadilla, Napoleon. Oh you know, I like my quesadillas. So <laughs> now we clearly know. Uh, whose house not to go over to watch Ah, oh, no! Oh, no, you gonna laugh. Not big movie yeah, right, right, right. You gonna laugh. 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 All right, so, um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, um, up first, uh, we have the, the, the Humane League of Pennsylvania. Um, they're going to be, um, providing free pet food, uh, today. Um, beginning at noon. Um, so according to the uh, Red and Eagle, um, Humane Pennsylvania knows the coronavirus pandemic is affecting people's pets as well. The nonprofit will host the Spikes Drive uh, through Pet Food Pantry from noon to 2 p.m. today at 1201 Benjamin Franklin Highway in Douglasville for pet owners who are struggling to buy pet food. Organizers ask that people do not get out of their cars or roll down their windows when they arrive. Staff will direct everyone where to go. The food pantry will be able to feed a maximum of three wow, pets that's great. per household. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's good that there's uh, that's huge. Like, you hear about all the all the places giving away food for families, but mm. we forget about our little family, right. our, you know, our little loved ones, the, our little extra pieces of love, <laughs> you know, right. pets, you know. Right. The fish got to eat too. Yeah. Right. And our furry our furry family members, like like our furry family members, you know, um and and but, but before reading this because we, we don't have any pets or anything like that. Mm. I didn't think about this. You know, like my thing is, all right, I'm I'm just thinking about the humans, you, you know, and, and and then when I came across this, it was like, "Oh, shoot." I mean, plus, like I mean, plus you always want to keep your you want to keep your pet Nice and plump. In case anything does happen. Oh my god. In case anything does happen. All right, listen. Stuff gets real. Let's keep. Things get real. You get. Listen. 
I don't care. When when a man is hungry, when food is of scared. Of course it wouldn't be the vet talking man about this. Man turns into a beast. <laughs> the vet, like, he's talking about eating I'm the animals. Saying. No. <laughs> I'm just saying, yo, it's good. We need no, we love our pets. But at the same time, if we run out of food, they're going to provide to I am not oh eating my God. cat. What? It's, oh my why God. You, you might have ate cat when you ate some what you thought Look. was barbecue oh, ribs. No, that was my accident. We got some we, questions. We all right, all right, yep. So did they list uh, where the location is? Uh, Tanya, yes. Yep. Tanya, Tanya's asking. Yep, yep. I'll put that in the comments for you, Tanya. Yeah, but uh, yeah, so. Yeah, Dom, Dom said they gonna go, he's gonna pee on you, man. Oh, man. Yo, I mean, listen, listen. I, I ain't saying I'm gonna eat him. Like, but he's not saying he's not I'm gonna not eat saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. What I'm saying is, if, 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 if it comes to what it comes down to, it's gonna be me and the pet. <laughs> me and the pit bull. The, that, it's gonna be the, pit bull. That's it, that's what I'm saying. But no, like I think that's really now cool. all the pit bull owners are cringing. <laughs> I think that's pretty cool though because keep think this, about keep this man away from your pets, man. <laughs> I love pets, man. My, I love my dog. But the, uh, chops. the chops are coming. I know. I think, I, I think it's pretty unique because think about all the different pets there are. You mm -hmm. know, like for, to have that many different pets. To be able to provide food for all right. kinds of people's pets. Well, I just think that they're just talking about the regular pets. Because somebody that goes in there be like, I need some food for my pet tiger. I don't think they'll have that. Nah, you go to Walmart. <laughs> go to Walmart, dog. <laughs> yeah, tiger well, food? Have yeah, have you go to Walmart. But what about just, like frogs? And... Okay, I can't believe it. No, because that, that fish place so much. You go to Walmart if you need tiger food. Yeah, but it's not giving it away. Yes, they are. Yo, anyway... <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I can't believe that. We're going to talk about this at another time. I can't believe you guys didn't know Walmart that feeds Tiger. You guys did. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. We're going to come too. back. But yeah, let me get to it. Yo, shout out. The, US, the, USA, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration has issued the first authorization for an at-home COVID-19 test kit. Woo, let me slow down. Um, with this test, people who are eligible can swab their nose to collect a fluid sample, but they will need to send it to lab for testing. Self sampling sidesteps the need for uh, self sampling sidesteps the need for a clinical to perform the test, reducing their exposure to some symptomatic patterns. It also frees up more personal protective equipment, which is in short supply. The test costs one hundred and nineteen dollars. One hundred and nineteen dollars. Okay. Wow. So that much? That doesn't take a whole test. Though. Yeah. Right. Like. For as much as we're saying we need testing, right. it's a little pricey, but we kind of got to get out. If we want to get back to normal, yep. we got to get down and get tested. Yep. Right, right. Um, um, I'm, again. We're still having to go out here and buy groceries. We still got to pay our utilities. I'm, you know, still waiting for somebody to say we ain't got to pay the electricity. Like, <laughs> like a hundred and anything dollars is still a lot of money for a lot of families. Nah, especially when, check. especially everybody when everybody got the stimulus check. Everybody did not get a stimulus check. There are millions of people who, Marquise, you got a stimulus yeah, check? The yeah, banks been, the I banks ain't got a stimulus been, check. The bank's been beating people for checks too. Oh, well. It's, 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 yeah, so it's what do you think, what do, what do think about the price of the test, man? I don't, I think it's I think a little pricey. Under the circumstances, that's the fact right. that we all need them for every year. Yeah, we need a scholarship for the for the home kids. <laughs> yeah, right. it was how much? Hundred nineteen. Hundred nineteen sponsorships. Yeah, that's that's. I, I mean, I mean, but but let's let's not let's not do this to ourselves. Let's 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 know we are in a capitalistic society and just think about you you know why um, can't there be why. Why free? isn't everyone provided with a free test kit? That's what they should be protesting about. Why aren't about. they? That's that. That's why they oh, should no, take they... guns down uh, to the Capitol and because the because that test is is hundred nine. That's where your energy should be, right. Billy Bob. That, right. I don't get. You want to charge us? Open up the state, not because you want to go to the Poconos. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. No, it, it it needs to. Be, you need to be protesting this. This yeah. hundred and nineteen dollars for an at home kit. Yeah, that's right. it should, when it should be a universal kit that keep that we want to keep it down. But people taking the test would swirl a cotton swab just inside their nostril. When clinicians take samples of COVID nineteen tests, they take they stick a swab very deep into the patient's nose, to where the back of their nose meets the top of their throat. Self administration nose swabs are just as accurate as those more invasive swabbing techniques. According to analysis done by the United Health Group and Gates Foundation, the FDA started allowing those types of swabs at the end of March, although the agency said they still have to be done under the supervision of a clinician. So these are the kind of tests that they are giving out every day. Yeah, So, but it's an it's a at-home test. 
Mm. But you still have to have a commission there with you. Yeah, or, or, or I mean, I guess on Zoom to watch you. I didn't get no stimulus check. I'm blessed to be working. But people do need money to survive. So they need to do something for the less fortunate. Right. Yeah. Mm. I, I agree with that. Let's get to number three, y'all. Uh, all right. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, some of you may know, some of you may not know. Um, Donnelly, uh, is is what Pennsylvania's tenth tenth large? tenth tenth largest employer. Um, and and yeah. they are going through some financial. Uh, yeah, they they've uh they filed for bankruptcy, which is absolutely crazy. Yeah, uh, for a big business and uh. Well, actually, it's not even uh, it's not even Donnelly. It was came in and bought them by another company. Yeah, uh, LSC Communications. Yep, they came in, they bought them up. Uh, they 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 want to keep employees in business. Right. You know, I know uh, out in Wisconsin, they laid off like 343 employees, uh, but they're they're working to keep that here in this area. They keep from laying people off and keep people in business. Yep. Uh, know, so. so um so according um according to Newsbreak um. The struggling owner of the two former R.R. R. R. Donnelly printing plants um, in Lancaster City has filed for bankruptcy reorganization. LSC Communications, which operates print printing plants on Greenfield Road and Harrisburg Pike, said it chose to enter bankruptcy to reduce its debt and better position LSC wow. to compete. And this is this is what we're seeing, and and we chose this for a particular reason because, um, um, as as uh. As unrich people, mm -hmm. let's say that as unrich people, you know, filing for bankruptcy, it's it's not an option. Mm -hmm. Like like being being bailed out, you know, that's not an option. No. Like no, it's not. It's either we have or we don't. Right. It's like you hope to have, trying to come up with little ways. You you find ways to hustle and make it. Right. You know, like if you, if you're not blessed to if you're not blessed to have deep pockets or have somebody that you can lean on, someone that can help you. You know, it makes it a little more difficult, and you need more help from outside sources. Right. You know? I, it just seems like um, all of these things should be made available for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like, if I apply for bankruptcy as a normal, you know, lower class American, it's going to be completely different than the owner of of a of a plant. And like, oh, uh, like that. I know. And then we just passed the bill yesterday. Mm -hmm. We just passed the bill yesterday. And which is ordered to stimulate small businesses, but all it's it's more money for loan repayment money. Right. You know, I feel like we just keep we keep loaning, 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 well, loaning. America was built on, it, on I, I, My thing is like these these small business owners that 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 are going to keep depending on these loans. What's going to happen when they never make up that money? Right. When oh, they so never make up that money. Taxes. They're going to not give us the child tax credit. They're going to no not problem. give. They're going to do something so that we pay for it mm -hmm. because that's how it always turns out to be. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll let you know this. I I don't want to have to pay for you know the loan on top of the loan on top of the loan mm -hmm. or have my kids pay for it. Mm -hmm. I mean, how would they handle regular Americans we, not we, paying their loans? Are we create? Are we creating generational debt? Mm. You know, yeah, we went from generational wealth to generational again, debt. Yeah. Like, are we creating generational debt? <laughs> like, is that where this we're at right now? Great, especially in these middle class white families who they they have loans attached to their businesses, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Now you can't pay that. that that's yeah. gonna be a lifetime debt that you've, you've incurred, and you probably leave no. to your kids. So you that's think about these question. these small owned businesses, these family owned businesses that pass it down and pass it down. You know, like, hey, wow. it, it's gonna get harder and harder. You know, especially when more more Americans are gonna be out of jobs. All right, but on a lighter note, Wendy's is offering free chicken nuggets on Friday. Woo! Yeah. Go get that McNugget. Yo, <laughs> yo, real quick, about to give Wendy's a little, a little serious plug. Wendy serves breakfast now. Yeah, yeah they, they do. do. Do you guys it's have it? Pretty good too. Is it? I heard. Okay, I heard, okay. Heard. But here you we go. Grits. All right, uh, you Wendy. Got grits. All right, these this nuggets. Is, it is Anna, Wendy. Right, right, right. <laughs> nah. This ain't Chuck's. Waffle, <laughs> Waffle House right across the street got grits, and their grits are banging. I ain't going to hold it. And they deliver. Yeah, yo. They might be the only place in town that got grits. Yeah, Waffle, Waffle deliver, House's deliver, grits deliver, are banging. Grits in the city. Like, yeah, right, I will right. plug them. Waffle House, you can sign me to a deal. Like, excuse me, sign yeah. TCP in the morning to a deal. <laughs> we will promote them and, grits. This will come eat the food for it. I will. I will. My grandpa eat that stuff just about every day. Yo, <laughs> I will be a total Negro. <laughs> <laughs> On that commercial. Get some scrambled eggs. Get two grits. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> but, yeah. but yeah, all you gotta do is yo, all you gotta do is pull up. You pull up to one of these, no purchase necessary. Right. Okay, you pull up, say yo, let me afford them nuggets. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just keep hitting that drive. There's what there's six of us. Alright, look, let's go drive. Boom, uh, like it's us again. You know what's crazy? Oh, the what driver. I, Come back to the window. There, listen, listen, sorry, there's a limit. One per vehicle. Yeah. All right, and uh, it doesn't start. It doesn't start till after uh, ten after ten thirty a.m. After, after breakfast. breakfast. After yeah, breakfast. After, bre after breakfast. Even better. <laughs> yeah, Even better. Be are you guys eating Wendy's? Do you care that their nuggets are free? I do. Drop it in the comments if you're gonna stop by Wendy's on Friday after ten thirty a.m. to pick up your free nuggets. Yeah. Yeah. Extra Shout drivers. out. So if you need somebody <laughs> to go with, to take you to get them nuggets, come see me. I'll drive the first time. You can drive the second time. It's a nugget heist. We all yeah. take it over. And you know, we only got, I think we only got the Wendy's now. Wendy's, you done messed up? No. Oh, uh, are the other ones closed? Uh, Lincoln, Lincoln, Highway. Lincoln Highway and uh, Harrisburg Park. Lincoln Highway and Harrisburg Park, yeah. So we only got two Wendy's in our town. So expect those wow. lines to be worse than normal. How big is Lancaster? Well, we used to have three. <laughs> yeah, we used to be big. We used, we used to have a Hardy's. <laughs> that that part. I used to love that Hardee's, part. man. Uh, 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 so, um, wait, um, is it Hardee's or Roy Rogers? Oh, we used to have both. The same thing, ain't that? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, Lady L, what would be the uh, uh, first thing you get on Friday? Side of the uh, free, free nuggets. From Wendy's? From Wendy's. Oh my goodness! I'm going. I'm gonna get me a spicy chicken sandwich. Add the cheese and give me a side of cheese sauce for my French fries. Okay. Yes, I know if you don't like cheese and I know it's bad for you, I know, but it's delicious. You know how, what cheese it? does to you? Huh? They, have they have the baconator fries. It, it, ain't, it ain't hot enough for a frosty, and I get it. Right, like, I got ice cream in the house. I'm okay. <laughs> All right, so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are, we are moving and goovering and goovering. Uh, Grooving, grooving, moving and grooving, moving and shimmying through uh, no. the shimmy, right, 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 shimmy, and shimmy. We get our Dan Rue on, you know. <laughs> what is you doing, baby? Uh, so, um, uh, uh, our next story uh, comes from Yahoo News. Um, Trump to temporarily suspend immigration to U.S. amid coronavirus uh, fears, and and the article says. Um, over 2.5 million people worldwide have tested positive for the coronavirus. More than 178,000 people have died worldwide, according to Johns Hopkins. The United States has more than um, 820,000 confirmed cases uh, with over 45,000 deaths uh, that are attributed to, to the virus. Um, so, um, what, uh, what, what Trump has done is, um, is, is stop um stop the green card okay um <clears throat> so the the united states um uh, uh said that president trump uh said in light of the invisible enemy he will sign a executive order to temporarily suspend immigration into the united states um <clears throat> this is a, a quote from trump on twitter in in light of the great attack from the invisible enemy as well as the need to protect the jobs of our great american citizens I will be signing a executive order to temporarily suspend immigration into the United States. Um, so, yeah, reading that article, um, and it's it sounds way way worse than right, what it is. Right, like right. Like it, it, I feel like he's. And I'm not gonna talk about my opinion of what it is. I'm gonna talk about the news. Talk about what it is. All right. <laughs> okay. Now, what it is is he's just uh, he's putting a hold on workers that are already here. Okay, workers that are already here can't apply. Okay. Um, I know, and this this affects the majority of uh, healthcare workers. You know, a lot of immigrants are healthcare workers, uh, farm workers, landscapers, crab pickers, and uh, and so forth. You know, so this this uh, this affects some of them as far as coming in. You know, put a put a pause on like thirty five thousand visas, as well for uh, people trying to people that work. You know, our doctors and everything that are travel work visas and stuff like that mm -hmm. as well. So, you know, it's it's not. It's not that scary. It doesn't sound as bad as right. Well, I'm can I looking at the article. I think for me, I was just a little bit confused because it's like, well, I thought you already suspended, you know, the planes coming in from China and those people visiting. I thought we had already suspended like the air flights and stuff like that. So then, we, how would people come into the country anyway? We're we're pretty lax. We're pretty lax, in, like uh, as far as that went. You know, like we 
I tried early, but uh, and now we're going to be wolf, yeah. now we're going to be serious. If if so, if you told me before that you did A and B to keep us protected in regards to immigration and the virus spreading, if that was like uh, not really, you know, so tough. Now I'm going to believe that this new thing that you're going to sign is going to be tougher than the last thing that you did. And I I don't see how that necessarily helps. I mean, I think all across the world, countries all over the world have are on a stay at home advisory. So what immigration are you stopping if the whole world is at a, at stay at home? Mm -hmm. What people from from Brazil are traveling mm -hmm. here? What people from you know, United Kingdom are traveling. Like, I'm just trying to understand what was happening that you said, oh, this is, you know, giving us an influx of viruses. Let's mm -hmm. let's stop it here. This is how we can curb it. I'm not seeing how that is, mm -hmm. is helping. Like, I, it just seemed like something to do. Yeah. Something for him to, to say. Keep them relevant. Keep, I, keep us talking about you. Guys, yeah. we are in an election year. Yep. We are in an election year. That okay? Like, we're going to see people pull out the stunts, you know? Like, he, with COVID nineteen, like with COVID nineteen, I don't know. With 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 everything going on, for us to try and make something, you know, take the spotlight off of it and try and create something else, you know, like some other kind of conflict, you know what I mean, or make something seem like it's, like it's not what it is, right? You know, it's it's, I think it's stupid, right? You know, so like we have to, we have to make sure we're paying attention to what's really going on, and we're getting the news for ourselves, you know, like, get I don't know, sharing it, you know, you have your own opinion, get the news. Have your own opinion. Have a Go from there. Yeah. With somebody who don't think like you. Yep. Talk tune about in, it. <laughs> tune in to uh, TCP in the morning to get your news and information and everything like that. Like mm -hmm. little little stuff that you can do <laughs> to uh, get your news. Shave right, plug. Right, 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 right. Just, just, just some some things you could do to uh, stay in the know. And um and, and yeah, I I I really do think that this was a bone <clears throat> to throw to his um his base. Yeah. Yeah, be, be, because, I mean, this is like, yes, he's doing it. He's doing it. He mm -hmm. stopped immigration. And mm -hmm. the the irresponsible journalists that 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 continue this narrative and that write these clickbait uh, headlines, this is going to perpetuate that, that lie that he has stopped immigration. Mm -hmm. Because I've had so many conversations with people since that article came out that, oh, Trump finally stopped immigration. Like... You didn't read the article. <laughs> COVID nineteen, <laughs> right? COVID nineteen right. stopped and, and the reading headlines. You think that Trump is doing is getting things yeah. done? Right. We got we to read in the articles. Right. Right. And 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 we're seeing more and more people. And I don't understand why because everybody got more time. But we're seeing mm -hmm. more and more headline readers. You mm -hmm. know, since more people are at home, they're reading more headlines. Not necessarily yeah. more stories. More headlines. They're yeah. reading more headlines. If your kids see you read, I'm happy for you. Right. But make sure they, that you know what you read. Like, have, <laughs> my, thing, my thing is, like, we got to have more than a conversation starter. Right. You know what right. I mean? You want to have some depth. You, you, you want to know what you're talking Substance. about. Yep. Right. Jazz, Jazz, good morning. No, she good says, morning, everybody. Uh, Who else uh, watching? Good morning. It's TCP in the morning. Read. Good Yay. morning, sis. Um, in the morning. Um, Ayana, <laughs> Catherine, uh, Robin, Elise. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All. Good morning. But Chris. Good morning. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for I, watching. I, I do have some bad news though for some people. Yeah. What is that? All right. Amazon. Mm -hmm. Okay. Amazon owned Whole Foods is tracking and scoring stores it deems as risk of un un unionizing. Okay. All right. It's uh. It's 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 marking them as hot spots. Mm. It's it's marking them as hot spots across the across the globe where they're at. Why? That's why. Why would they do that? Why? This is real quick. Why would a why would a company mark a hot spot for places that are that are about to unionize? Uh, they're scared. Money. Right there. You're right. They don't want to lose money. So when you unionize it, it. It's bad for the corporation, right? So Jeff could lose lots of money and having to pay, um, for my job, they do pay nice wages at Whole Foods, but paying better wages, offering better health care, insurance, and nobody wants to really do that. The paid time, all family, um, medical leave. Every, I, I noticed, like, since everybody's been home, probably even before that, every, a lot of people shop on Amazon. People shop Amazon. They make more than enough money. They make more than for, enough money. Yeah, it's no, it's for us. Hold on, I'm saying no. It's for us. It's, if anything, 
They should be cool with unionizing. Go ahead, unionize. No, because you know, like get paid. No, it's just our money. And I need my two day shipping. What if these union people don't want the two day shipping to be happening? I can't afford that. See? The argument for it is he loses way more money than we gain at anyway than, than, right. than the employee gains anyway. So that's the only argument for Jeff Bezos. So and instead he of it by having to pay all that insurance for all those people now, and, and he's not paying that right now, and he would probably have to pay taxes on some of that stuff. He, he would really change his model if they unionized. He, he said he was cool with it. That's why he ran for president. He said he don't care. And that, they would have to change their model if they yeah. unionized. I, I, and, I mean, hopefully they're gonna have the same profits. I don't, I don't know. I love Amazon. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I think that is just one of those things where it's like um, um, every, well, not every, but a, a, a lot of ultra rich people, they're worried about the poor uprising, the poor getting together. <laughs> and, the revolution. Right, right. And whoop, whoop. and now, now they're trying to track it. Like, they're like, all right, let's track these revolutions. Like, where are they going? Right. Here's how it started in the 60s. They were unionized in the 60s. That's where it all began. And no, that's, that's, that, that's the thing. <laughs> what we talk about criminology yep. yesterday yep. with uh, the study of, of black people. And it's, it's almost a crime. Not literally, but it's almost a crime. Yeah. If you see seven black dudes standing on the corner just talking. Mm -hmm. That's right. almost a crime. What are they right. doing? Let alone, right. let alone having that uh, as a uh, union base, right? Right, right. So, so that that uh, that suspicious activity. <laughs> that suspicious now, acti now we're tracking you. You know, right? there's there's that 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 heat signature is too hot. It's too hot. There's I, too many people there. I, I know we even talked about it. Like, yo, know, seeing seeing anybody anybody together, any any group of collective, you know, now with mask on now, even mm -hmm. more. Oh my. You know, you see a group of guys with masks, and you see a group of guys with masks. Right, you know? right. Like, you right. see a group of people, like, uh-oh. You know, yeah, so... You, you know, is a great deal. I don't get why the uh, why it would be an, an issue for anybody. Right, a hot, considered it a benefits, hot spot. It benefits, um, it benefits one side, but the one side needs the benefits more anyway. Right. Mm -hmm. But that's Absolutely. not how capitalism works. Right. <laughs> like you just right. said, oh, well, this not one capitalism. man yeah. Yeah, could right. have so much more money mm -hmm. instead of giving, you know five dollars to all of his employees it just makes sense to just give all the five dollars to this one guy and that's pretty much what we're saying yeah again and that still just sounds like another form of trickle down economics <laughs> like jeff's gonna get all this money and maybe one day jeff's gonna share with his employees in the form of a bonus or maybe i'm so black i'm gonna see whatever it might look like but we you got to unionize. Good luck, Whole Foods. I'm rooting for you guys over there. Good luck to the Amazon uh, people that are working in the in the factories and the plants, making sure that we get our two-day shipping, making sure that, you know, things are happening. Um, and we are keeping, you know, the families in our prayers that have been affected and impacted, as well as the Amazon packaging facility out in King of Prussia. So, yeah. yeah. Let's get to this. You're, you're on the last story, man. Yeah. All right. So, and since we're here, let's talk about one last thing before we uh, move on for the rest of the morning show. A woman, stunt woman from Resident Evil. Y'all remember Resident Evil? Yeah. Stunt woman lost her arm, was in a coma. I mean, all kinds of craziness from being a stunt person on this movie set, and she finally got paid. Yeah. This is where um, we all clap. <laughs> listen, Jackson, a UK based stunt performer. And a former model and Muay Thai fighter was standing in actress for Milly Jokovic on the set for Resident Evil: The Final Chapter in 2015. She was injured. She injured herself in a high-speed motorcycle accident, with the camera mounted on a crane from a vehicle traveling in the opposite direction from her. She suffered multiple fractures, brain swelling, ruptured arteries in her arm and neck, and spent 17 days in a coma. All right. She uh, also was left with a painfully twisted spine. Paralysis of the left of the top left quarter of her body, including her neck, a permanently dislocated shoulder, a severed thumb, punctured lungs, and broken ribs. Jeez. Man, she had her arm amputated. A South African court ruled in favor of Jackson. <coughs> Jackson. <laughs> in favor of Jackson that the stunt was negligently planned and executed and that the driver of the other vehicle was uninsured. Oh. Now, the biker action the company she was working for, she said it they said it was her fault. But the judge ruled that Jackson had not voluntarily assumed the risk of the accident and was unaware that the director of the movie instructed the company to decrease the safety margin from the stunt's rehearse, rehearsal. Oh. So 
Yeah, so like they they cut back safety precautions to get a great scene. So some of them great scenes from the movie, like weren't meant to be. You know, like mm -hmm. could have been her. What could have been the scene where she got hurt? So now she has to live with this aftermath, and she says she doesn't feel the same. She wants her old life back, her old body, and nothing's been the same of for her. Course. You know, so she's jogging on the beach. And it's whatever. it's been five years. It's been five years, and that movie made over three hundred thirteen million dollars, three hundred twelve million. million. You deserve, you deserve your money. money. Congrats to you, and yeah, shame on you guys for trying to screw her over. Like, shame, shame on you guys. guys. Hey, but you know what? I wonder how uh, how often this happens, and we just don't hear about it. Mm -hmm. A lot of things handled behind closed doors, an undisclosed amount, an NDA, mm -hmm. um, and it, I mean these things happen. And we have young children who are like, you know what? This might be a profitable career choice for me. Um, knowing good and well that you could be hurt, that, you know, again, these corporations are not concerned about the safety of people for the director to say, oh, let's pull back those safety measures mm -hmm. so that this woman can potentially well, lose her. Like, that doesn't and, make any but, sense. That's, 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 that's where the, the, the company that she was working for should have stepped up and said, no, if we have these precautions in place. Okay, there's a whole risk assessment done before any, before any like in the military, there's, there's risk assessments done. Okay, just think big businesses. Risk assessments are done before you can perform anything, before you can do anything in order to pass the safety inspection. You know, you know so, so to cut them back, back and not let your the stunt devil, the stunt person know, like that's, I don't know, it's just, you can't, I don't know, just, you're, you're, you're putting someone's, someone's life at risk, risk, you know. You know? It's, it's bad, bad enough that they're doing, doing this, this, you know, you, you find, find people who are wild, wild enough, enough. Like, I say, say crazy. crazy, you know, but are wild enough and, and like the thrill, thrill and enjoy, enjoy it. it. You know, you, you don't, don't put them at risk and try and kill them. So, yeah. But, uh, well, I think that um, what we should try to do is that we need to make sure that there are advocates on the set for our stunt people. Just somebody always there to make sure that they're safe. I mean, because there's a lot going on in a production on a production set. Mm -hmm. There's so many working parts. Things are slipping between the cracks just to make sure that there's an extra buffer right there to make sure that the stunt person is going to be safe. Mm -hmm. um, I think should should maybe be a requirement. Yeah. Also, um, what what else uh, today today? Oh, listen, guys, if you have un uh, you got until twelve noon today. Um, for people who do not receive income, so if you are living off of like SSI or SSD and you have children, you have until twelve p.m. today uh, to file. Mm -hmm. And let the government know that you have your children that are under 18, mm -hmm. which is weird because they already know this. They already have this information. So now the administration is asking for it again. So um, is, it, is it just for, is it people also on Social Security as well too, right? Yes. Like, um, like I know, uh, if you have some elderly people like grandfathers, <laughs> grandmothers who haven't filed taxes in a while because they don't have no income, let them know today. Like, give them a call. I know I got to call, call my grandfather. And get on him. I gotta let him know that what, and get him to the website. You know, because our if you're if you have an elder, they don't know how to operate their cell. They might not know how to operate their cell phones as well. You know, they may not have access to the internet. Okay, so pull up on them, make sure they're good, and uh, you know, help them get help them get that money. You know, help them stimulate their bank account. Yeah. Now, right. we I am looking for the direct website mm -hmm. um, because. Of course, it is in a loophole deep somewhere yeah. in the internet. <laughs> Google, you better Google Siri, Alexa. Like, there's so many different ways that you can get someone to help you. It, it sucks because I feel like the, the IRS quietly snuck this out. As many news briefings as our, our administration has, nobody was loud and vocal <laughs> about doing this and needing to be done. And it you haven't until... 12 o'clock today and it just came out literally they told us this what on monday mm -hmm. oh. it's wednesday and that's ridiculous and it's unfair and again we're continuing to marginalize people who are already on the fringe of our communities all right ladies and gentlemen you are watching tcp in the morning um a morning show that is powered by the mighty mighty tcp network um Thank you all for joining us uh, th this morning. Jade, what's up? Good morning. Uh, Shippersburg, in the building. Snucky, what up, Snuck? <laughs> we uh, up, bro. Zach Steinberg, what's up? Uh, uh, hey. Zach, Zach, yeah, yeah, what's up, Zach? Uh, uh, Kevin Joyner, what's up, brother? Good morning, what, good morning. What up, what up, Thank everybody? you all for uh, watching. Uh, 
Ms. Olga, thank you. Thank Brian, you for what up, watching. Brother? Straight out of Philadelphia. Uh, uh -oh. Jake, Jade also. Uh, we out uh, so, here, um, We out here. Y'all up yeah. with us in the morning? Yeah, so Ooh, uh, uh, thank, even you. Yet. Th thank you for joining us. And, you know, share, share, share. Jay tell Thomas a friend. Says, tell hey. 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 hey, we got to go. We, we, Jay, we got to get you on sometime. You want to talk about, like, a woman that is on fire and doing it? Wow. Like, yo, uh, Jay, uh, that yeah, uh, yo, yo, yeah, it's, it, it's that same kind of energy. Like, oh, like Jay somebody, bring, somebody out here that's oh, really Jay bringing the heat too. Yeah. She bringing the heat too. Yeah. All right, Jay. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right, right. So yeah. we'll definitely be in contact. Uh, but, um, but to, um, kind of wrap up everything uh, for our top seven at seven this morning, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we, we talked about the, um, Humane League. Uh, they'll be giving away free food. Um, we put that address down in, in the comment section. We'll put it down in there again. Um, we have, um, there's a take-home test for the coronavirus that was approved by the FDA. $119, $119 in case you $119. missed the cost. Start, start $119. saving up unemployment checks. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 we also talked about, uh, um, r and &R Donnelly, uh, and, and, and Sons. They are, uh, they, they have filed for... Bankruptcy, yeah. and, and we discuss what that means for the economy here in in Lancaster and mm -hmm. Central Pennsylvania. Um, we talked about Wendy's. Wendy's is giving free away nuggets. free chicken nuggets on free Friday. Nuggets. Just pull up. Free nuggets, I mean, free nuggets. I, I keep on saying Mick nuggets. I know. Oh, I know. <laughs> no, that's a damn thing. You know what's the problem? You no, know, that's, that's a problem because there's parents, there's kids out there, like all the. They're not chicken nuggets. They're McNuggets. <laughs> right, right. They're just McNuggets. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hey, you get a bag you of McNuggets know. from the store? You they know. don't sell McNuggets, McNuggets at the store. Right. <laughs> um, also, also, uh, um, uh, we uh, talked about um, uh, union unionizing uh, that Amazon. Amazon and uh, Whole Foods is, is trying to stop, um, and, and they're tracking it via uh, heat maps. Mm -hmm. Um and, and and we also um talked about the the um immigration lady. ban the yeah. temporary immigration ban by Trump where he, uh it's it's not really he stopped we're stopping all immigration coming in we talked about that and we also covered the Resident Evil stunt woman uh, right. Miss Jackson you know sorry Miss Jackson <laughs> everybody got to do we know you did it at home too every time you decide Miss Jackson you gotta follow it with a <laughs> right right so. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, um, we're uh, we're about to get to some commercials and then uh, hit you off with uh, the TCP news break. Um, and, and again, uh, today we sit down with Isaac Etter, um, who is a amazing, amazing, amazing man. Um, this is a black man who was raised by white families, um, um, a white family. He was adopted, uh, and and he goes into great detail about um about his experience uh, about him really not knowing about race until he was over the age of 16. so um you hear so, about that a lot too like it's real mm -hmm. common you know um uh, my little brother my little brother he same way you know after my mom passed he's raised by his white godparents you know mm -hmm. and, you know so it's gonna be a real great story and you just right. really tune in like really get to understand someone you know this is i feel like these this this kind of interviews your chance to to get to see what it's like for someone else's life experience right. outside of your own right and uh and ladies and gentlemen whether it's your um whether it's a uh, story that you want covered whether it's um, um an interview that you want done if you want your story told uh if you want your music highlighted and and played um if you want your music video played we play more we want more than hip-hop um, please, 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 tcpnetwork254 at gmail.com, tcpnetwork254 at gmail.com. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here for you. We're your megaphone. So, you know, use us, utilize us. And with that, we're going to get to the commercials and the TCP news break. Ladies and gentlemen, it's TCP in the morning. New Wake up, guys. It's TCP in the morning. Wake, Wake up. up. Wake 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 up. It's TCP in the morning. 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 TCP in the morning. It's 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 TCP in the morning. 
Good morning. Wake up, y'all. It's TCP in the morning with the morning tea. Sing the song, man. Hey, TCP in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> It's your boy, Just Dom, catching the day's latest news. What's going on around the rose? Find out here first at the TCP News Break. This is your girl, Lady L, and I am here with our guest uh, for today. Uh, Mr. Isaac, can you please introduce yourself for our audience members? Of course. Uh, my name is Isaac Etter. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a consultant and entrepreneur. I own a consulting firm that helps families that are adopting children of a different race. Um, and I also serve on a couple boards. I serve on the board of the LGBTQ Center in Lancaster, um, and I'm excited to be here. All right, all right. Um, and can you tell us about some of your uh, business ventures? Yeah. Um, so my first business venture was a failed business venture, but it was definitely like um, a very, um, I think, key experience in like helping me do what I do now. But the first business I owned was a nonprofit, um, and our goal was to get young people more involved in activacy work. Um, and it was called Lancaster Together, and we worked with colleges and with nonprofits to put on events around social issues that taught people about the social issue, but also gave them avenues to volunteer and to get involved. That um, sounds fantastic. Yeah, I loved it. I just wasn't I wasn't as smart back then, so I didn't I didn't do it as well as I wish I would have. But I still love the idea. I do, I do still hope work like that gets done. Um, I do do my best to like still try and do work like that. Um, but then I switched uh, paces a little bit and I started my consulting firm, which mainly focuses on helping train families to adopt children of a different race. We also do some business consulting now around starting businesses that have a social focus mainly on adoption and foster care. Mm -hmm. So we help other consultants start their consulting firms or we help people that are trying to start um, nonprofits or social enterprises with a focus on helping the foster and adopted community. Okay. All right. Um, so can you tell us some more about how or why you came up with the idea to help families adopt children of a different race? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I was adopted. I was adopted when I was two. Um, so I've been adopted most of my life. Um, and so when, when I started um, telling my story, so uh, an adoption agency reached out to me just to volunteer, just to come tell my story. Um, and the more that I did that, the more that I realized that there was this need for specifically white families that were adopting children of a different race to have a space in which they could talk out um, bias, um, their fears, and also just how they felt about the experience of transracially adopting you know for for as much work there is i feel like for as much work there is put out on racism and anti-bias and how much white people should know about racism uh, a lot of times they don't put in that effort until it's almost hits them in the face um and a lot of times it doesn't hit people in the face to actually do that work until they're adopting a child of a different race and so i run into a lot of a lot of white families who had just never really thought about racism or their own bias or how they thought about other people until they were in this room adopting a child um, of a race that they maybe didn't have good relations with or they didn't think highly of. Um, and all of a sudden now they're adopting a child of this race. Um, and a lot of times I think these parents find themselves in like, not a dilemma, but in like kind of like a, like a weird, like a weird crisis in which they're like, it's weird that I always judged this race and always had like weird feelings about this race, but now I'm adopting a child of this race. And so a lot of what I do is break down why that bias exists, how that bias forms and how we work through it. Um, I'd say that's really like 99% of what I do is break down the walls of racial bias and, and also how we formed our bias. Cause I think that's also important in how we break it down is understand how little things have informed and, and made us racist and biased towards people. 
Wow. Okay. All right. So do you offer some kind of like a pre and post um, survey and supports? Um, we do training. So, I mean, I guess, I don't know if we do a post survey would be probably a good idea, but we don't necessarily do like a post survey report. We mostly deal on the pre. So we help people that are about to adopt. Mm -hmm. So my goal was to stay with people who were about to adopt children of a different race because I believed that it was better to catch them before they had the child. You know, to do this work after you're already raising a child or while your um, child is like a teenager, it, it's just so traumatizing, I think, for everybody involved. You know, my family didn't start thinking about race and culture deeply until I was an adult and I was speaking out about it. And, and that was a very interesting time to see my parents' fragility around those topics. And that was very traumatizing for me. So I usually try to catch parents on the front end. That way we're doing this deep, hard, and emotional work before a child kind of enters the home. That way it's being raised in a situation with parents that also understand bias and culture and how to raise a child of a different race in a setting that actually like appreciates their culture. Um, and also without like the subtle, I mean, I would say that my parents taught me like racist things by accident. You know what I mean? So just like the way that we act around people tells our kids a lot. And so it's also good to catch them just so that they don't pick up on those racist and, and biased characteristics. When, when I was like, from the ages of like 17, 16 to like 18 and a half, 19, I was just working and undoing a bunch of like racist notions that I had and undoing a lot of things that I was raised to believe about people, whether it was, you know, my parents told me that about that person or I saw it with their body language and how they were never around people like that or how they reacted when they saw people um, of certain stereotypes or how certain people dressed. Um, and so after having to do all that time undoing it, I was like, it's better if you catch people on the front end. So like most of our efforts are put on the front end. Uh, I'm writing a book right now for families. Um, obviously anybody could read that. Um, and I'm hoping that a lot of our future work starts to deal with um, helping like more adult adoptees kind of work through their trauma. But right now I wanted to stay closer on the trained parents. I'm just trying to not overextend what I can do as one person. Yeah. Well, that, that's, <laughs> that's why you build a team. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You build so, a team. Yeah, and so that's that's an exciting part of this year is um, kind of looking around and recruiting a team. Um, you know, the end goal for my business was always to add a counseling department. So where we would offer, we'd have licensed therapists and we'd offer uh, counseling to families or to adoptees or foster kids that they get special counseling from people who understand them. You know, that's such a big deal with therapy. And as Black people, I think we're learning that more and more as more of us start going to therapy is having a Black therapist is like a big deal. Um, and so I think having adoptees that are trained to be therapists also be therapists for other adoptees would be like a really cool um, thing. And so that's kind of like phase two of where we're going in the next like year and a half to two years. And so I've been building out um, a plan and a team for that. And it's been a really exciting venture to watch me kind of recruit people uh, from all around the country to see if they want to come and be a part of this. Um, and it's been really exciting to see the results. Uh, right now, I'm talking with a lady in Texas who I'm hoping will, will come eventually um, head up counseling for my business. Awesome. Um, awesome. And so it's very exciting times for that. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So, um, back to some of the, I just had some questions. Um, so back to like the children, how do you think that children are being impacted, um, both in positive and negative ways from transracial adoption? Yeah. Um, I think that, I mean, Overwhelmingly, I'd say that it's it's a tricky topic to say that there's not a ton of positives. I mean, the positive being that they have a home, basically, um, is probably where I would say that most of the positivity of the situation um, stops. Just because I think we need 
we need to have a bigger effort put in reuniting families. There's just such a big effort not put into reuniting families um, that I think that, you know, as a country and, and as like, as people who care about the foster care system, you know, it's kind of like a growing topic, the foster care system adoption. Um, it's been growing ex like hugely over the last two years that I've been involved in it. Um, I think that that's where the effort needs to go because more and more we're seeing that transracial adoption is leading to a lot of trauma when it comes to race. You know, not only from my story, but a lot of, especially my generation of adoptees, whether they, whether they have good relationships with their family or not, there, there's been an overwhelming amount of stories around just, just confusion on where you belong. And I think that that is, that is, um, I think that's deadly for adoptees in general, because as, as an adoptee, whether, no matter what race you are, you already kind of feel out of place if you got adopted. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you're already away from your birth family and you're in this family that that can't 100% understand you. And then you're also, if you're a different race, you're also dealing with like this, this crisis of who am I in terms of race? You know, me as a, as a white person in a black family, I mean, I didn't really know other black people growing up that weren't adopted. And so until I was an adult and I went out into the world on my own and kind of forced myself to assimilate, I didn't really know how to be around black people. And that was always like really hard for me. Um, and so I think I do err on like saying that we shouldn't be promoting adoption in general as like this big thing that people need to be doing. There are kids that need to be adopted, but there, are, there also needs to be more programs set in place for reuniting families. I will say that you know, I love my family. I'm, I'm happy to be adopted by my family. You know, me and my family don't have issues. Um, but a, as a large, in, in a large scheme of things, I think that's really important to keep in mind. Um, yeah. And, and I think I, I also mentioned some of the cons in there, which are that it just, it's a huge identity issue. Adoption as a whole is a huge identity issue um, because you're always scrambling to try to figure it out because you've just been pushed so many different ways. Yeah. Um, and I think that it's, I'm thankful for the opportunities that I had growing up and that I've had in as, as a young adult to actually like put the pieces of my life together. But I also know that there's a lot of adoptees that haven't had those benefits. Yeah. yeah. So now would you, do you see, what kind of adoptions do you see? Do you see majority of white couples adopting brown children? Do you see Asian couples adopting white children? Do you see black couples adopting white children? Like, what, what kind of uh, family makeups are you seeing? I'd say, like, you know, in the high 90 percent of the times we're watching white families adopt a brown child. Okay. I think it's, I think black and, and Asian are the most popular that are adopted in terms of like racial breakdown. Um, but I, I feel like I mostly deal with, you know, um, a white family adopting a Latina or black child is mostly where I come into play. Um, if, they're, if they're especially bringing me in for something. Um, yeah, just because I also think that's where I know best. You know what I mean? It's hard for me to talk about Asian identity when I don't even know what that means for yeah. me. You know what I mean? So I usually try to stay where, where I understand it because like I say to my truth. Um, and so I run into a ton of, you know, white couples adopting black kids um, and then trying to put the pieces together. You know, a lot of people that adopt don't even really know other black people. Um, and so. So their baby is the first black person that they're about to interact with. A ton of times. Okay. Yep. A ton of times. Baby's the first black person that, that maybe not even interact with as a whole, but at least will be the first black person that's permanently in their lives or that's in their life in a significant way. Um, and so that's also, you know, that's an alarming, it's an alarming fact. Um, I, of, I, I, and I'm hearing you talk and I'm just like, I can't imagine um, being in a predominantly white community and then facing issues in school how and maybe you can share with this with our audience but how do you deal with that as a child you know having to go back to your parents and say somebody either called me a, the n-word or my teachers being like mean to me like something doesn't seem right like 
how can these yeah. children kind of advocate for themselves and say, hey, something's not right, mom and dad? Yeah. So, I mean, thankfully, I think for me, well, one, I was homeschooled for like a majority of my life. So that was one thing. But and I also think that the the community that I was in and the way that I was raised made me ignorant to most of the racism that I experienced. So like most of the racism that I experienced, I didn't even know I was experiencing it until I was older. Like I can think back on instances now, um, you know, like people asking me, do I say words certain ways or um, being upset with me that I wasn't as athletic as other black people. Like I can think back to things happening now, but when you're in when you're in the bubble, you almost don't realize it. It's why I think so many people, like so many white people don't think that they're racist. It's because when you're in a bubble of people that all think the same way, you never you never really like looking to the left and right and thinking, oh, that's different. You know, I was kind of protected by this whiteness. And, and when I left the house at 17, that's when everything kind of exploded because I realized that that protection of whiteness was over. You know, when you go to college, it's that's where I kind of started to experience that. You know, everybody I grew up around, everybody I was homeschooled with, everybody in, in like my homeschool co-op classes, everybody knew that I was adopted. Everybody knew who my family was. But when you go out into like a random, you know, community, yeah. nobody knows who your family is. Then, it, then I kind of started to experience, oh, I'm different. And this is, this is why, this is how Black people normally get treated. Um, and then you're to the point of like, what do you say to your family? You know what I mean? I'm, I'm 17. I just graduated high school. Um, I'm not necessarily running back to my mom and dad to explain every racist thing that happens to me, but it definitely did throw me off to, to start experiencing racism when, you know, that's not something that happens to you. You know, I went to Bible college, so racism was kind of just like a normal thing there. Um, at a Bible college, you yeah. trying to tell me that they was teaching about Jesus and they were being mean at the same time. Of course. That's, that's, the, that's the MO. It's Jesus and racism. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking, uh, I, I, hearing you speak um, and then talking about going to school and everything, what do you think that um, governments or institutions can do to support the child? Like, yeah. if you say yeah. that it's okay for transracial adoption to happen, what yeah. do you think they need to do to make sure that these kids are safe? I think we just need better better training. That goes back from like the adoption agencies that you're adopting from and the and like the government programs. You need better training for families. It it's really a hard it's really a hard line to really play because it's like it's it's kind of like picking the better of two evils when you feel like you shouldn't have to do either. Um, because it's like, do you give a child a home who doesn't have a home? You give them to a home that may not be ready for a black child. And it's kind of like this toss up sometimes. I can, I can already imagine like social workers going through this toss up in their head to where they're like, well, I'm not sure that this family is ready to raise a black child, but we don't want to send him to a foster home because that's not a great situation for people either. You know what I mean? So I really think it comes down to like training, um, the quality of training that we're doing and, and the way that we're training people also. I think like it, as a country, we're in such an interesting place to where like people are really rigid in terms of their opinions. You know what I mean? People who are on the left and the right, they think that, that, that like that's all that they can be. And so the way we teach things is very like left and right. We, we teach things black and white, right and wrong when, when a lot of issues aren't like that. Um, and, and also people aren't like that. You know what I mean? People, people are only made up of opinions that are honestly given to them. You know what I mean? Like we think for ourselves, but we think for ourselves based on things that we read, things that we hear. You know what I mean? We don't necessarily come up with these invention, invention like racism isn't a new invention. Yeah. Like white people didn't come out with that this year. Um, and so I think like taking people from where they're at is a big deal. I think that's why I really enjoy doing what I do because I'm very baseline about things. I'm like, we're just going to take this from, from the jump and we're going to let you kind of facilitate getting out what you need to get out. You know, I always say that I listen to racist, com racist questions for a living. And I do that on purpose because there's not spaces that allow people to grow easily anymore. Mm 
Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I think that it's very intentional. I don't think it's black people's job to train white people, but I do think that it, as like a consultant, if that's a service you want to offer, you should do that in the best way possible. Just like I would do it for a black person in the best way possible is that if you create a room that lets everybody feel love and support and ask questions that are hard questions and everybody go through it together, then you just get a lot more done. You know what I mean? I don't feel like people come out of my talks um, the same as they came into them. And I think that's because they were able to ask questions in a setting that didn't feel like they were going to be judged for the questions that they asked. Um, And I just, I think like how I like to do active C work is exactly like that. Um, Just creating spaces where people can learn and grow in safe environments that are safe for everybody. Because as soon as one person feels vulnerable because they think something, then it's kind of like an explosion, you know what I mean? As soon as you're on the defense and other people are on the defense, and then everybody's just kind of like has a defensive shield up. And so I would rather deal with like a really ignorant question in a really responsible way than I guess have like a re have like a negative reaction to it just because it's shocking. And it is shocking. It's always shocking. But it's just I feel like you got to work through it rather than try to run over it. Yeah. Now, do you have any ideas on to why um, maybe a service like yours wasn't implemented in the transracial practice Mm -hmm. when they started doing it? Like, do you have any ideas on why nobody in the room said, hey, let's, uh, you know, bet these parents a little bit differently. Let's, you know, ask them some questions to make sure, like, you know, check their bias just in case yeah. um any ideas on why that may have not happened ahead of time i mean i'm glad that you're an innovator and i'm glad that yeah. it's you but yeah. sometimes i'm just like you know you got they've been doing this for generations and right. you've been you know separating families for a while and we know yeah. that most children that are taken away from their homes are children of color mm-hmm. and then you know with you sharing with us that a lot of people that you see are white families adopting children of color and it's almost like you take them from their parents to give them to white families as if they're going to be better than mm-hmm. their own families and communities without any regards to just making sure that on the inside, those people are equally as beautiful, you right. know, and making sure like morally they're going to support that, that child and help them, exactly. you know, through life. So, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. any ideas? Yeah. I mean, I know that they, they have they have curriculum around it. Like it's not like it's not a topic that they don't cover. I think it's about thir- like how thorough it's happening. Okay. You know what I mean? I think, you know, as much as I think social workers do their due diligence, I also think that they're kind of like on a schedule. And so they have to determine whether a family is eligible for a transracial adoption or not in, in like a in like a quicker time frame. So I don't think it's necessarily that nobody is like trying. I just also think that nobody was thinking super heavily about it up until like the last few years. So people, I guess, weren't making as big of a deal about it. Um, You know, it's even when I talk to adoption agencies now, there, there wasn't that many, there wasn't really hardly anybody doing transracial like consulting. Like that wasn't really a thing up until the last couple of years. And even the people who were doing work in that like arena, it wasn't in, it wasn't like a business type way or in a way that was, you know, providing any services for adoption agencies. So there hasn't been like, I think there just also hasn't been like a huge push to do it. You know what I mean? You know, white systems aren't really like that. They don't just change because it's the right thing to do. No, not at all. (laughs) After millions of us are dead and then they're like, hold on. (laughs) Yeah, um, exactly. So it kind of, I think it's honestly, I think it's just like that. Cause I mean, even still like people, when I, when I do marketing, like even still people are kind of like unsure about my services. They're like, I don't really know that we need wow. to do that. And, and it's, I guess it's like fair because it's like new and it's like, it's kind of like weird because it wasn't something that was happening. You know, whenever somebody like contacts me to like start doing this, I'm always like, just don't really expect to make money because it just doesn't happen because it's it's still like a curve it's still kind of like going like 
people are starting to like really understand that this is something that they need to invest in, but it's still kind of like just starting to get there. Um, and so you're really not, I mean, I don't really know any consultants that are doing this that are like, like a hundred percent living off of it. Um, just because it's not that kind of field yet, unless you're going to like write and do like a bunch of things, like write multiple books and, and those books actually be selling and all those kinds of things. Um, so it's a very interesting, it's a very interesting field because it hasn't quite, adoption agencies haven't quite latched onto it yet because they haven't been forced to. Yeah. Yeah. That part. <laughs> yeah. That part. <laughs> Um, all right. All right. Um, so I do have one more question. Mm -hmm. um, as far as, you know, once children are adopted, usually that's kind of the end of services. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, I mean, there are post services, I think, through adoption agencies. And like there are there are different pro there are depending on where you're living, there are, you know, programs for later. Um, but there's not I wouldn't say that there's a ton, not, not the way that I think that there needs to be. Um, I think that adoption is one of those, is one of those things to where it was a very, um, you know, like Christian religious based practice that was more based around um, kind of the glorification of this idea, you know what I mean? So we glorify people for adopting children because it's a beautiful thing. Like yeah. you're taking them from no home to no home. Um, and so sometimes when that happens, I think you miss a lot of the other things that need to happen. So there's all this focus and praise on the fact that you've adopted, but those children have trauma based around their old situation and possibly now their new situation. So there wasn't an emphasis put on counseling or parenting classes or support groups. And there are support groups for, for adoptees and some parents take advantage of them. But I think that again, I think like it's more like a new thing that parents are starting to take seriously. Like parents are starting to educate themselves before adopting. Parents are starting to create those groups. Um, like it's such a new wave. I mean, nobody, nobody that I grew up with that was adopted, I can think of that really I know regularly went to something like that or whose family regularly went to something like that. You know, I have a couple of friends that were involved with um, adoption agencies as volunteers. Um, but it never really in the way that I think would have actually been really healthy for all of us. Um, and so I just think it's, an, I think it's new. I think, you know, adoptees that are being adopted now are growing up in a different, definitely in a different time period. I still think there's a lot of work to do. Um, and that's really kind of where I've tried to like shift and like see if I can um, kind of start to paint a picture of what the future of this could look like. Um, not just in terms of consulting, but what does it mean to do adoptee and foster care focused advocacy work mm -hmm. um, in this kind of, in this climate that's growing in terms of content creators, um, consultants, you know, it's, it's, I feel like it's start, it's like one of those things is like starting to kind of like explode in a sense mm -hmm. right now. You know, I'm watching all these transracial adoption Facebook groups and, and all these people who are starting either consulting businesses or YouTubes or blogs um, and just kind of like watching how those people are starting to gain traction and also watching how the adoptive parents are starting to kind of watch those things. And so now I'm trying to see, okay, so what do we need to kind of take some of this online and make it applicable in person? What kind of services need to be around for those families? What kind of youth groups do their kids need to be going to? What kind of counseling do these families actually need? Because I think that's a big, big thing. You know, me and my family sometimes talk about how, you know, that's something that we would have really needed as like I was, uh, while I was growing up. You know what I mean? And a, a counselor that could understand our family situation and understand my situation, as well as, you know, be in the room facil facilitating conversation would have been so helpful. And so, I think what I'm trying to do is create the physical spaces to what some of the online world is starting to create. That's really my next goal, I think, is like, how do we make this a physical thing? Um, if, we, if we have all these people who are, who are doing this work and who, who wanna help families, who wanna lead 
you know, trainings and do support groups and things like that. How do we make that an in-person thing that's happening in, in cities? Um, and so, yeah, it's been an interesting time of like trying to figure that out. Awesome. Awesome. That's exciting. All yeah. right, Isaac. Well, while we wrap this up, can you just give us three things you want parents to think about before they consider a transracial adoption? Oh yeah. Um, I think you should think about like your, your circle, like who you hang out with, um, who you spend time with. Um, I think you should think about, you know, what you think about people of the race that you're trying to adopt. If you already know, you know, this is the child that you want to adopt. You've already, like, I don't, I honestly don't know if you look at a book or what happens, but um, you know, if you've decided that, you know, that's the child you're getting and it's a black, Hispanic, Latina, Korean, whatever child, you know, think deeply about how you interact with those people and then think about who, if those people are in your, you know, in your group, in your community and in the circle you hang out with. Um, and then I think like, just be teachable. Like if you're adopting a child of a race that isn't yours, like it doesn't really matter. You need to learn from those people. So be teachable, be open um, to learning how to cook food of the child um, that you're raising or to, to meet new people of the same culture and ethnicity as your child. And, and just be teachable and open to, to new experiences, um, not just because of the child, but because it's also like a good thing for you to do. Awesome, awesome. All right, Isaac, can you just remind our audience of the name of your business and how they can contact you? Yeah, so my business is uh, Edder Consulting. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook. Um, yeah, it's IsaacEdder.com if you want to look up that too. That's kind of like, I guess, like the whole shebang. That's like me and the business. Um, but yeah, I think that's, that's about it. All right, thank you. It's your boy, Just Dom, catching the day's latest news. What's going on around the rose? Find out here first at the TCP News Break. Wake up. Wake up. Wakey, wakey. Will you get up? It's TCP in the morning, y'all. It's TCP in the morning. Good morning, y'all. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake, wake up. up. Wake up. Wake up, y'all. Wake up. Wake up. It's TCP in the morning. It's TCP in the morning. Let's go. It's TCP in the morning. TCP in the morning. It's 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 TCP in the morning. You don't want to miss this. Mm. Wake up. It's TCP in the morning. Woo! Gentlemen! Good morning! Welcome back, y'all. Hour number two with TCP in the morning. I am one of three hosts, Marquis Lupton, a.k.a. The Quiet Storm. We got the sword. Yeah! What up? Rise and shine! We got Lady L. Good morning, good morning. Wake up! Oh! It's a hot show, Jim Duggan! Let's go! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, um. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we hope that you um, enjoyed. Uh, the first half of the show. Uh, we really hope that you enjoyed that interview with Isaac Etter. Um, if you want your story told, if you uh, have a, a new story, um, or if you want your music played um, or highlighted, uh, contact us at tcpnetwork254 at gmail.com. Once again, that's tcpnetwork254 at gmail.com. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our number two. And... Um, <coughs> And for this, uh, for this hour, for this second hour, uh, for, for you newcomers, uh, th th this is when we get, uh, have a little bit more fun, um, insert our opinions more than, um, more so than just talk about the news. Um, so, 
for for today for right now we have our conversations with lady l so yeah. we're going to get to this uh uh quick little graphic and then we'll be right back stay tuned with Lady L. Um, I have my handsome co-host here, the Sarge. Hi, guys. <laughs> all right, all right. So, um, I just had so many options today. I didn't really know what we, what, we talked about so many things. I thought so many questions could really fit into with our conversations today. So, I wanted to give you lots of options, sir. Oh, boy. Decisions, decisions. Oh, no. I'm not even going to look. All right, I'm going to pick this one. All right, All right, front or back? Hmm. <coughs> I like this one. Okay. All right. Oh, okay. At what age should children learn the history of enslavement? Hmm. We'll go to Keisha to start. Let's go to Keisha to start. Yeah. All right. Go ahead, go ahead. Um, I think that as soon as they get out of the womb, you start talking to to <laughs> them. You know, um, it sounds crazy because they may not understand you know so we think you know but 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 i i think that that builds um that that builds that uh that Love ability that resiliency to, that to, to receive that armor too yeah yeah like like as soon as they get out you're 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 looking looking down that uh that that tunnel, that tunnel of love, but, but right now it's the tunnel of birth, and you're looking down there, and you're like, come on, Daddy on the other side. let's go, Daddy on the side. keep you running, come on, come on, come on, for your ancestors, let's go, let's go cross that border of freedom, like right, <laughs> right, 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 you know, boom, grab them out, welcome, my son, <laughs> you know, so, um uh from 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 the womb i i mean because other cultures learn about about their cultures from birth like you learn those traditions and everything like that you learn your nuances of your family of your race and and everything early so why not talk about that that black history early the first time you learn about black history should not be um in school in february just shouldn't be, you know. How about y'all? I I know for me, like uh, as as uh as my kids get older and they start to understand, you know, like I I hit I I give them stuff, I give them pieces, you know, for each as they get older, and I, I want them to understand. It's like, but I also want them not to, I don't know, I want to say not to, not not to let let it become their crutch or their weakness. Right. You know That's what I mean? I don't want to live. I noticed working in schools that. Kids that know, that understand their blackness or their their uh, their racial difference, they tend to use it, especially against these white teachers. They tend to use, oh, it's because I'm black, it's because you're not Spanish, you don't yeah. understand. And they use that a lot in middle school. Mm -hmm. That's one thing I noticed from 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 a personal perspective firsthand, working with black black and brown kids mm -hmm. and white teachers. That that's mm -hmm. one thing that as soon as things go wrong, they go right to it. They reduce mm -hmm. themselves. They reduce the teacher to act instantly being racist. Mm -hmm. It's like it's like though, and it's like. I was I wasn't taught that stuff when I was younger, you know. Mm -hmm. So like I'm trying to learn learn a way to teach things myself. Yes, see, my you know? dad. So it's like creating new tradition. Yeah, so it's like about, I'm I'm creating I I got I got to learn my I got to create my own family traditions, you know. About you, I like got to do are, the research for myself to learn. So you know and yeah, that's right. Uh, I well we I, I start early. I mean. Yeah, as, as soon as you get here, <laughs> welcome, right. welcome to the earth. <laughs> this is what it is. Um, this is society. This is where we are at. Uh, and try to teach my kids the story of resiliency uh, through that. So um, I know our history didn't start at slavery, but our particular lineage 
here, you know, links back to it. So that's where I can take them. Uh, for my husband, he can add, you know, a little bit more pizzazz to his family historical mm-hmm. stories when he shares it. But <laughs> now, did you uh, did you get knowledge of yourself uh, at an early age from your parents? Uh, yeah. Yeah, little uh, nuances and the ways that my parents spoke and how they referenced white people. And, you know, if you've seen a white people, a white person in your community, I mean, they were either the police or a social worker. Okay. Unless they were at school and your teacher. And that, that was the conversation. Yeah, right. Or selling, yep. or selling life insurance. Hmm. <laughs> like, real quick, yeah, I ain't gonna hold you. They're I remember, not, not sending the white into the black hood to sell white life insurance, man. Bruh, I, I don't know. I it might have been health insurance. insurance. I've, I've always been uh, like, sold to my black ladies. No, nah, like I'm serious. Like I, rem- I remember it was, it was an older, older white guy, and like I don't know if it was life insurance or health insurance, but like he'd, okay. he'd walk around the neighborhood, and knock on mm-hmm. doors, like, and he'd, he'd he'd come in, he presented and everything, and like I thought it was the coolest thing. I'm like, yeah, this guy. Can- you know, I'm like, the other fans that get it, my mom got it, and, like, it was cool. Okay. Well, guys, what do you think? At what age should uh, we teach our kids about the history of enslavement or just enslavement in general? Because it Is happened it? across, you know, the world. Well, well, hold on. What's the question? I, I, I the thought question it was black was, history. No. At what age should children learn the history of enslavement? Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm... See, I thought it was black history. The history of of enslavement, I a lot of stories there. And and honestly, I would begin with with before enslavement. Like I would spend years teaching about before enslavement because being slaves is such a it's it's a big part, but it's also a small part on who we are. Like there was a lineage before and and there's a legacy that was built and that is continuing being built after so like we can uh is, is, I, is enslavement that important a part to teach like is, is it doesn't it's, have to be intentional or should it just be a part of teaching knowledge yourself it it should be taught be, be, because it, it teaches us about our resiliency as a people that that we were once oppressed and and we rose to a certain degree from that and it also puts into context what's going on right now with 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 all of the racial issues that are going on right now. Right. It gives it um, kind of a genesis. It gives it a beginning point to where, all right, well, all this hate had to stem from somewhere. Right. So we have a place of origin with slavery. With let's let's stop calling it slavery. Let's call it what it is: human trafficking. Yeah, right. you, you 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 know it it. Let's use the modern day term. Right, it. right, yeah, right. Yeah, it's yeah. It, it's human trafficking, and, mm-hmm. and and that that's the thing. Like we're so we're so quick to say slavery, slavery, slavery. Mm-hmm. I'm working Hi, like toy. a slave. Oh, what's going on, Toy? Thank you for listening, Missy. What's up? Thank you for listening. Good morning. Um, thank but, you for watching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for watching. I gotta say, I I gotta stop say uh, stop saying that because we are a TV show. We are a TV show. Yeah, um, all right, all right, all right. So, uh, guys. Hold on, hold oh. on. We have a comment. Oh, we have a comment. Yes. I was just about to uh, ask the question again. All right, so, uh, so Key, if I say your name wrong, I'm sorry, but thank you for watching. Uh, Key, Key Yamaha uh, says, from the moment you tell people you have conceived your child, oh, wait, from the moment you tell people you have conceived, your child will be stereotyped teach them about self and history be- before during and after slavery from the womb read to the babies while they are in the womb yes. that is true yes. that yes. is true I love that yes. that is very true that. thank you for commenting yes yes yes, yes. And, and and please continue to comment and share as well so lady L. all right all right so uh, our next question does that make it difficult yeah. <laughs> well, at least I don't have to pick it. <laughs> right. I need to close my eyes. Oh, man. I Wait, don't know. I need to flip front or back. I know, because I saw, and they were both heavy questions. So maybe I, we want to pick another right. question. We, were, we had that one before. <laughs> yeah, we did. We had that one before. I think we did that one, too. Mm-hmm. We gotta get some more. All right, here we guys. go. All right. Okay. Oh, really? Are we really? Okay. Yes, really. 
what is the last book you've read and you'd recommend? The Bible. Read that you recommend? Oh, God. Good book? Scott said the Bible. The Bible? I mean, do you have to read all of it? <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I, I mean, this is why I see, and this is why I said it was serious. Because I know. But, but, um, but there was, um, there was this book, um, that, that I just finished actually, uh, on, on public relations. Um, and it really talked about how, how, um, a lot of people in public relations really don't know what public relations is and, and how public relations has, has really changed, um, over the past, uh, decade. Um, so would I recommend that for everybody? Absolutely. Because it talks about branding. It talks about marketing, um, uh, and, and everything like that. It talks about, uh, how you, you can get your, uh, story told and, and everything. And everybody has a story to tell, you know, so yeah, I would suggest that. And it was written by my frat brother. So, I mean, that's a little shameless plug right there. Yeah, my man, uh, uh, Dante from down at uh, Morgan State. What's so, um, uh, Sorry, man, I didn't put you on the spot. You did, you did, you did. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> I was like, oh, you dropped his name, you dropped his name. <laughs> right, book? right. Uh, but, but um, yeah, um, look up um, Dante Lee PR book. And you... You'll see. That's that's actually that's his uh, 29th book that, that he oh, wrote. Wow, wow. Yeah, yeah. That's like awesome. he's 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 doing it. You gotta get it over his. Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Oh me, I, I read I read like a lot of self help books and I have no idea what the. I mean, I don't I don't finish them. So <laughs> I think the last read? book I finished was like a James Patterson book. I forget the name of it, but like I'm a big James Patterson guy. Can I get a? Uh... Yeah. Uh, my Willie Lynch back. My Willie oh, yeah, Lynch yeah. back. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, books. did you like that? That's I brought it back. Maybe I didn't. Did you like it? Yeah, I did. I'm, not... I'm sorry. Uh, no, I got uh, a book. Me, me personally, yeah. so if I had to tell my, my, my book, uh, the last book, I read, I read a book uh, named uh, called Biased by uh, Jennifer L. Everhart. It's a book about um, the implicit bias that we've been trained to uh, believe and understand. And she actually goes out and she uses this book to teach cops and uh, to teach cultural awareness training throughout the nation. Like she's uh, she's really, uh, really, really good. Mm -hmm. And uh, another book I read lately that I just finished actually was called, uh, it's called Mindset by Carol Dweck. It's uh, basically about the, um, the growth mindset versus the, uh, Oh man, there's another, there's another kind of mindset, but it's really, it's the comparative between, you know, either b believing you're good here or always challenging yourself to grow towards the next, to the next thing. So uh, those are two books that I would recommend. I mean, mm -hmm. that uh, mindset book is really, really good in terms of motivating yourself and, uh, and, and transitioning your thinking. So. All right. Well, let's um, go, go to another um, question. Well, we have some, we have a few comments that, uh, Dom said, uh, decoded Jay Z. Uh, Javon said, yeah, energy box. John, John Gordon. I like that. Oh, I read okay. that too, Javon. That's, that's a good one. Too. Yo, what up, Dick? Good morning, brother. That's what up, Javon? Good. That's Thanks for waking up. The energy bus is a good book. Really, 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 really good one. Let's, uh, we got, let's, go, let's get another one. We got uh, time for right. what? Probably maybe two more. I think we read that one. Oh, okay. Oh. Um, no, let's do it. Put it on there. Yeah. Uh, would you ever consider homeschooling your child? Why and how would you go about it? I guess we're kind of all in that boat. Yeah, well, would we ever consider it? <laughs> well, you know, there was a time where I'm like, you know, I might just homeschool my kids. The world's getting crazy. And now that time is long past and I'm like, you know, you kids really need school. You guys need a social life. Like, you guys are You're almost them. at that point where you believe homeschooling would be better. Yeah, they were. Then you had to homeschool your kids. Our kids are growing up isolated, <laughs> well, all right? Well, Imagine no. what they're going to grow up like when they get in the world. We're going to have a bunch of homebodies. Like, think about it. As they get older, they're going to be a bunch of homebodies. Yo, this I is feel like it's going to have an everlasting life. They might life. have like, a, a different like they always been like this for whole months of their life. You're exaggerating this right now. No, we're not you're done. Exaggerate, you're exaggerating this, this right now. This isn't done yet. Yes, you're right. It, it might get no, it's been, it's 18 months. And, and what if, 18 months of and their what life. if we stick to cyber schooling next year? What if come the fall, yeah. we're not back, we're not back to being right, and there's no school, we're we're on cyber schooling? Then what? Are you okay with your kids? No, I, I mean then it's a then it's a year, then it's a blip in time. 
If that's it's small gonna, time, so you don't think that's going to affect any? You don't think that's going to affect any kids like socially? I don't. Like nah, being isolated if they don't have anything at home. If, if anything else, it's going to make some kids more social because now they can actually have a group of friends they talk to every day on social media. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. Mean, I, can, I, can, I will agree to a disagree. Kid, a kid can go to school every day and not have any friends. Exactly. But you can make, you can find general likes on social media. There, there are social groups for things you like. But people that aren't, people that don't have that though, man. Right. Oh, I'm saying, I, I'm, I can't, I'm not. Oh, well, oh, guys, well, I didn't. Uh, I think kids need school. Sorry. Kids, they, they need a little bit of everything and if you put forth the effort as a parent it'll be great Ooh. Ooh. and that's all you gotta do i, I, I disagree Dang, I you that's like so. shots fired no, I, felt, I, I felt i felt kind of offended by that oh i'm sorry i did like i feel like i give it a shot but like at school there's different personalities different teachers that can engage like that are engaging them in different ways mm-hmm. you know what i mean and like your kid gives a teacher a different kind of respect than they give you like, I don't care. Like, my kids are great for teachers. Kids, oh, I love your kids, you know? And then at home, sometimes they'll be little, little, oh, because little turds. Kids. You know? Yeah. Like, I tell them to do something, they won't listen. But the teacher tell them to do it. And they love it. Oh, yeah, yeah, you got me to. You know? So it's like, there, there's a, there is that separation. I feel like the kids need that. They need that. Well, go ahead. I'm sorry, Keisha. You're I, right. I, I wasn't going to say anything. Oh, unless you're saying you disagree. Oh, with, with, what what was just said, but not the uh, not yeah the no. Part, okay, yeah, well, go ahead, shit. share your thoughts. Go on, go, on, keep on talking. Oh my god, good. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What well, I, I I I I really I I don't have too much to uh. Bring Would to you this home? Conversation. Do you think your homeschooling's right? Do I no? I'm not a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> like that. That's why I. I don't have too too much to put to this. I'm I, I'm not a teacher. These are professionals who who went to school to to learn different tactics and how to deal with kids and behaviors and and, and everything like that. Um, so I'm no I'm I am I'm 100 against homeschooling. <laughs> Send them back now. <laughs> right. I, 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 I'm, I, I'm so against, like... He got burnt when he heard, what? School fall? What? Yeah, there like... be school in the fall. Like, <laughs> yo, yo, in, in, in high school and middle school, I was a C student. Like, <laughs> like I graduated college, undergrad with a 2.5. Grad school, <laughs> grad school was different, but, like, yo, my basis... <laughs> It's average as hell. <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm not going to, what am I going to do? <laughs> like, yeah, I ain't going to hold the like, Comic Core mask hard, dog. Like, yo. <laughs> Comic Core mask, I'm like, yo. What? You we sitting do there, what? We sitting there looking at the math problem together. My daughter's in second grade. We sitting there like, <laughs> like, what? Try to figure it out. And I <laughs> think that I can do this better like, than somebody that went like, to school for this? Be like, what you think? What <laughs> Right. Well, listen, well, right. Talk about some Siri. Show me the counter example. All right. <laughs> hey, don't you look. Don't you look. But yo, I feel, look. I feel all uncomfortable. She was like, Dad, is this the right answer? I'm like, I'm like, yes. <laughs> like, yo. No. Uh, we got a um uh, uh um oh, man. comment. Um, oh, oh, all right, all right, all right. But um but yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I, I, I respect, um, and have respected teachers, um, and, and what, what they do, what they go through and the, the profession that they choose, um, choose to live by, choose to live with, like to think that I can do what teachers do. Like, that's like, that's like, and I really hope that people get this analogy. Like, just because you think you can teach doesn't mean that you can be a teacher. Mm-hmm. Same thing with just because you can play basketball doesn't mean that you're an NBA player. Yeah. Like, you can look from your couch on a TV and say, oh, yeah, I can do that. Yeah. I can play with them. I can ball with them. And y'all do that with your teachers, too. Oh, I could teach this. Mm-hmm. I could teach that. But to deal with 30 different personalities and at least 120 different situations 
that comes at you every single day, and that's just the kids. All them emotions. Like, right. You're getting emotions that aren't right. even meant for you that are felt from home. Right. Like, listen, I just want to say, I'm going to throw this out there. Keith didn't have an opinion on this topic at all. <laughs> all right. I'm gonna throw that out there. I'm gonna throw that out there. He didn't have an opinion on it at all. He's like, he like, no, whatever. No, I don't. I no homeschooling. No homeschooling. I think we have a long way to go to say we actually should start appreciating our teachers more. If you got oh, teacher friends, yeah, yeah. Yes. reach out, tell them thank yeah. you for what they're doing. And I guarantee. Send them some money. Send yeah. them a. Um, um, Care package, right? Something. But let's start showing these teachers as much love we show everybody yeah, else. Right. If they, you're they, gonna storm the they capital, they deserve it now more than ever. Right. If, good if job, you guys. Storm the capital. Storm the capital for yeah. teachers. Yeah. Buy some supplies. Right. Right. Uh, Brandon said, uh, I, I, "I love this homeschooling thing." But you're a teacher. That's different. <laughs> you're teaching two kids. Like, versus the thirty. And well, the two this, kids are this, yours. This is way easier. For right. Me. Right. Right. He, he, he's like, what? One lesson plan? Oh, I'm, right. And like, or if I get mad, you just go to your room and do your work. Yeah, right. We're not right. pushing. You can't apply. And and Brand, like Brandon, Brandon teaches in York, and those kids are just straight disrespectful. So and Brandon said he loves his homeschool, right? Yeah, and he's just chilling. I would too. Like, like yo, Brandon, Brandon, oh, like look, so easy. Hey, you, you, you all watch um Wildin' Out. Like, just imagine that as a classroom. That's Brandon's classroom. Like, <laughs> like, yo, everybody want to be funny. Everybody want to go viral. Everybody think they can yeah. rap. Right, everybody think they can rap. Like, it's... Hold on, it's, hold on. I ain't going to hold you, yo. We used some of us used to think we could rap, too, back then. Yes. I can still rap. Yes. Oh, gifts. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo. I had a mixtape in sixth grade. I'm just oh, saying. Oh, oh, yo, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, go, I used to sing a little bit. Right. Yeah, you know. yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Sarge sang the thong song in 12th grade. 9th grade. 9th grade. Ninth grade. Oh, oh, ninth grade. No, you. The thong song grade. wasn't out in 9th grade. Yes, it was. I was in 9th grade when I did that. Really? Yeah. He's man. younger than us. I was about a year. You could have been a 10th grade. Right. Grade. That's grade. right. Nine that's nine right. Grade. That's no, right. I, I did a whole dance That's right. right. Yeah. I think yeah, so. How do you know? Who told you about it? Lancaster is big. Oh, man. And when you think the, sing, sing the thong song in blonde hair, that. I didn't have blonde hair. No, well, that, it's, uh, let me hear the story. Let's do this. Let's do uh, one I more card, Lady L. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do one more card. Let's do one more card, Lady L. Let's do one more card. What is going on? We're the news, man. We're the news. I had blonde hair. What? We're the news. Well, there was a time I did have. know about this. I had a relaxer. Gentlemen, good morning, good morning, good morning. You are watching um, TCP Network, uh, TCP in the morning. This is our last 15 minutes of the show. Uh, today, we uh, talked about the um, Humane League. They're giving uh, free free uh, animal food. Um, we put the address in the time, in our uh, comments. Make sure you go on ahead and check that out. Uh, free nuggets. Excuse me, free nuggets uh, will be given away on Friday at Wendy's. Uh, it is at any Wendy's location after 1030. Uh, so make sure you check that out as well. Um, and if you um, want to see more, make sure after this broadcast, you click that button and check out the rebroadcast. And like always, share, share, share. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. So, going to Lady Al. What's up? Oh. We got the last one coming up. Oh. Last one coming this is we should pay the bills. That's why. Right, I was supposed to. Well, I thought we were gonna pay. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> with everything that's going on and the coronavirus and everything like that, uh, we just so happen to pick a great question about: uh, Do you believe college is worth the expense? Boom. This day and age. With homeschool now, we don't want to homeschool, and we want our kids to get the most. So it's co college. Too. It's still worth the expense. No, I don't know. Um, I I mean, yeah, yeah. I I mean, what 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 expense do you put on getting out of your situation? Like like for for some people, you know, um, college is a way to escape your house, your hood, you know, your s situation. You getting that opportunity to become a chemist, you know, you getting that opportunity to to graduate college and then and then move to another city and and work in that city, 
like what price do you put on that? You know, like like what price do you put on coming from a house, a two bedroom home with with 16 people in it to now being able to provide, you know, for for those said people? Like what what price do you put on that? You know, it's easy to say and I'm sorry, I'm I'm about to come at all the art majors here. But <laughs> but like it's easy to to say, "Oh my gosh, I got this art degree for thousands of dollars and everything like that but also pursuing art like what does that do to you getting that passion out um filling filling those canvases like stroking stroking those brushes and like what's the what's the price of peace you know what's the price of artistic expression i guess all right when i when this is the question I think about the expenses. Like, should it, I'm thinking it should be free. it should be universal. You know, it should be like if you choose to go to college and you do what's required in high school, hey, you should be able to go to college. You know what I mean? I think it should just be a part of the American way of life. You know, so um, like you you get you get memories, you get experience, life experiences that you never get that you'll never get. You know, but at the same time, you know, like you can you can find yourself in debt. You know, and like you can find yourself in a debt that you'll never get out of. Like mm-hmm. the rest of your life, you'll have this debt that you'll be dragging along. Like no matter what you do, where you go, and like the the reason you got the debt, you may not even be able to achieve in that in that um, in that field. You know what I, I mean? Because it's, it's hard. I, yeah. We're, we're yeah, leveraging um, one way, right? Because there are things about college that are also invaluable. Right, that you really can't measure the networking, mm-hmm. the growth, right, the personal accountability and the responsibility that you gain from being on. But we're own, talking about expenses. Is it worth the expense? But these are these are also these are mm-hmm. these are expenses that these are it's, it, it comes at the cost of those expenses though. You mm-hmm. can't get those experiences without that expense. Uh, well, ooh, I can get it without a hundred thousand dollars. Well, we got a comment, and I got yep. yeah, we got a comment. Um, that depends on what your goals are. You can get IT certifications and not go to school. Trade schools are another option. If you don't know what you want to do, uh, college isn't worth the, the cost. And that's, I, I totally agree. Uh, thank you for commenting, uh, Sabrina. I totally uh, uh, agree. Like, if you if you don't know um, what you want to do, like my undergrad, I went to Shippensburg. Bunch of people, bunch of people that got human communications degrees because that major you needed a 2.0 to get in i'm not coming at anybody just making a point you need a 2.0 to get in human communications like not communications that was a whole other department with journalism and everything like, yeah this is human communications like so like so so like it's like yo what are you what are you going to do with that degree and everybody that got that degree from the school I graduated from, I'm about to have a whole bunch of people mad at you. Inboxing mad. But yo, everybody. <laughs> Shots fired. Everybody that got that degree aren't doing anything with it. Okay. And I'm not too sure if you can do anything with a human communications undergraduate degree. Not like communication. What? Communication. You said communication. Well, you talk to people. I, that's that's. It just sounds sales. like another way that schools <laughs> get their money. Like, oh, well, let's uh, further bare segment. minimum. Listen, but they got the know. money. And there was when I was going to school, there was a thing called athletic coaching education. There was a four-year degree mm-hmm. that taught people how to be coaches. You don't need four years of college to learn how to coach. All the great ones do. But, but they give, but they make you take it. Most of the good ones go to school for communications, for right. journalism, for history, right. and and they and they use coaching to do other things. Right. But like they have, they had the intent when they went to school. These guys, they, they were guys literally going to school only for. At coach. What are you doing, Joe? I'm about to be a coach. I'm about to be a coach, y'all. Well, I, I, it's a great I, career, but studying to be a coach? It, well, well, think about it. Can I push back a little bit? You gotta make it uh, um, as 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 a as a coach of color, would it behoove you to get that that piece of paper and have the experience? Right. Yeah, it would. But you can you can you can do both. You can do both at the same time. It's just, uh, I, I kind of look at that as like, um, with, with journalism, you know what I mean? Technically, technically you don't need a degree 
to be a news reporter or anything like that. Like Matt Lauer, at the height of his career, was making twenty three million dollars a year. You know, and and he 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 didn't he didn't do any like journalism school or anything like that. Like he had a college, I mean, a high school diploma for a while. Like when he first started on a Today Show. Um, working on the weekends and in the background, like he worked his way up as a page. You know, Lester Hall, on the other hand, went to school. Like he went through the rigors of of being a journalist. Now, as somebody who had that experience, could you tell school? Yes. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You, you know, it it it's just like it's it's uh it's one of those things. Oh man. Just flying by. It's it's uh it's one of those things like like you can you can tell at least from from the first two years like somebody that went through three years of college um and then jumped to the NBA NFL well jumped to the NBA versus somebody that that's just fresh out of a prep school or something like that like there's a developmental gap. difference right yeah, yeah. right now now down the road that gap will shorten but but yeah um uh sabrina uh she says uh, i went to school for various art and design fields only to learn that while i like to create i don't have a niche that would make me sellable something i wish i had learned early on something that happens to a lot of us going to college right we go, we go with the intent and the belief that we love something right and then we like oh well there are a million details I didn't know <laughs> I to do. right oh well, well I don't it's like, like, so it's like psychology <laughs> Psychology, man. Right. right, and then 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 I, I think that for for a, a lot of us, we we don't have the people put in place to prep us. Mm -hmm. Like we have all the support mm -hmm. in the world, you know. Those people go get it. You can get it. Do it, young man. We're behind you. But there's there there's really no people to be like. All right, well look, here's what you need to do. Main First, courage, this, 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 right, and this. right, right, and then and then this, this, and this is gonna happen. Um, for for myself, I was in a unique situation because I had Ron Martin reached out to him, and and, and he really, you know, got you. You, you got to do this, you got to do this, you got to do this. Like like all of the demo reel stuff, all of the square your shoulders and the voice inflections and that. I didn't learn that. Um, from my jobs, I didn't learn that from school. I didn't learn that from um, from my internships. I learned that from journalists of color who took time to teach me about the game. And, it's all about giving game. And that's what we need. If we had artists, more artists of of, of, of color, to to teach them how to monetize exactly mm -hmm. how to be sellable and everything like that. Because by the time the artists be become like 40 50 they're in a groove mm -hmm. like like they're like okay i found my niche i know what i'm doing i'm grooving oh, yeah. you know they can send that elevator back down so that somebody that's 21 don't got to struggle for the next 20 years to get to where you're at right now and in return they're gonna they're gonna exactly continue. Who at 30 or 25 exactly yeah. and, and 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 that's what a lot of um a, a lot of white people do they're they're very good at sending the elevator back down. Like um, I, I went to Lakeshore Catholic, ladies and gentlemen, and a lot of um the family cookouts that, that I went to with friends at Lancaster Catholic, there'll be times when they would separate and like all the little boys would would go in one room and sit down with the uncles and the fathers and the grandfather and talk about stocks, financials, investment, sending that elevator back down, and you're learning this at a cookout. Right. So, so I mean, that's that's. What you learning at Christmas? <laughs> it, it, exactly. Like, like you're you're getting that enrichment, and they're probably getting that enrichment at home as well. So then they have they have that blueprint for when they're 17, 18 years old, going out into the world, going out into college. They're just more prepared. You know, they have a blueprint and not motivation. You know, so um, so ladies and gentlemen, just want to uh thank you for uh, joining us this morning be before we uh, head on out. Uh, Sarge, Lady L. And uh, don't forget the Humane League is giving out free pet food. Uh, the address is down in the comments. 
Uh, and also, uh, Friday, Wendy's is giving away free chicken nuggets. So free nugget Friday at Wendy's. <laughs> All right. Uh, also, thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. Share this with a friend if you enjoyed the show. Follow us on Instagram at TCP underscore network. Uh, and again, thank you for watching and share this with a friend. Hey, listen, it is Wednesday. It's hump day. You're still stuck with the kids. You're still stuck doing stuff you don't want to do. I don't know. Maybe you're essential and you're, you know, you're risking it all. Um, continue to be safe out there. Continue to find patience and continue to be resilient. You know, um, better days will come. All right. So uh, enjoy your day. Stay positive. Yep. Peace. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, um, yeah, hump day. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Um, don't forget to check out everything the TCP Network has to offer. Uh, tell a friend, tell a friend, tell a friend um, to join us every Monday and Wednesday at 7 a.m. to um, 9 a.m. Ladies and gentlemen, that's everything. Thanks again. TCP Woo! Good morning. Wake up, guys. It's TCP in the morning. Wake, Wake up. up. Wake 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 up. It's TCP in the morning. 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 TCP in the morning. It's 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 TCP in the morning. Good morning. Wake up, y'all. It's TCP in the morning with the morning tea. Sing the song here in the back. TCP in the morning. <laughs> <laughs>
So we just smoke on our knees. It's TCP in the morning. Good morning, y'all. Wake up. 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 Wake up, Wake up. Wake up. Wake up y'all. Wake up. Wake up. It's TCP in the morning. It's TCP in the morning. Let's go. It's TCP in the morning. 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 You don't want to miss this. Wake up. It's TCP in the morning. Woo!